excited to be bringing you yet another conversation right here on the Meet Your Mentor TV show. My name is Daniela Asariedo and I'm your proud host. We're coming to you from the Central University Matahiku campus. We're being refreshed by Cheesy Pizza and Nutri Day from Fun Milk. My beautiful makeup was also done by Nodi's Makeover. We'll take a quick breather. When we come back, I'll tell you who I have the honor of speaking to today. <music> You're welcome back. Oprah Winfrey says that a good mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope in yourself. And that's exactly what this show is committed to helping you doing. Today, I'm excited to be introducing to you engineer Francis Lamte, who's a geodetic engineer and an expert at water supply and environmental sanitation. He's an entrepreneur, he's a pastor, he's a lecturer. He currently works with a Ghana water company as a distribution manager at the Tema region. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Engineer Francis Lamte. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Please. Engineer Lamte, thank you so much for giving us your time. All right. So first of all, we just really want to find out who is Engineer Francis Lamte? All right. Engineer Francis Lamte is the first born and only son of a family of four. Mm -hmm. I was born in Accra, Jamestown. And um, I attended school from Adibraka up to my sixth form in Accra High School. I'm married. Mm -hmm. I have two children. My first born is in UST civil second year. Okay. And the second born is in uh, uh, Christ the International School. Okay. In the final year. So your first born is taking after you, after you in, in terms of engineering. Engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Did you push him towards that? No, she chose it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, interesting. You've, you've told us a bit about your background. Take us through your educational experiences and how did that as well as your background shape the man you are today? Right. Um, I grew up in a salam down. Mm -hmm. At the age of three, my parents separated. So I didn't get to go to school, so I didn't go to preschool. Okay. So I didn't have, you know, background in this phonics. I didn't get the mind stimulated in a lot of areas. Right. So at the age of seven, my grandmother sent me to class one. So I had to learn how to write at the age of seven. So I was in Bundy Road Primary School, I think it's in Adraka somewhere. Then I continued my middle school in Amamumu four and five. I saw the common trans in second year, mm. form two, that's what they call it that time. Then I went to Accra High School, one to seven. And then I went to Kiel University. I, in fact, growing up, I wanted to be a pilot. Okay. But I later realized in life that there was nobody in the family to help me. And I was the first person in the family to have passed the O-level to A-level and to get to the university. Mm. So then I had to, if I had to do piloting course, then I had to go outside and there was nobody. Mm -hmm. So I said, I opted for engineering. Okay. I wrote the A-level in 1991 and I didn't get a grade for engineering. So I, I was determined to do engineering. So I wrote it again. Mm. In 1992, then 93, I went to first year. I wanted to do civil to start with, but my grades were not good enough to do civil, so they sent me to geodetic. I've never heard of it <laughs> as a school. I didn't know what geodetic was, but then they said, "Yeah, you can only do geodetic engineering." Geodetic was supposed to be part of civil. Okay. It was a survey part, and the design was a civil. Okay. So they created another department called geodetic mm -hmm. engineering department. So the first two years, I didn't really like the course because mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. So I really struggled. And coming from a very poor background, too, there were a lot of challenges, food, a lot of things, there were a lot of difficulties. But gradually, I went through it. Mm -hmm. And then I got in plane Ghana Water. Ten years later, I went back to do civil engineering. Okay. In my master's, that's the water supply and mm -hmm. environmental sanitation. And that's how it all started. Interesting. Uh, yours is definitely a story of resilience. I mean, so you you did come from very uh, poor background, poor background yeah. right? And that is the story of a lot of young people. Yeah. A lot of young people do come from such backgrounds. Some of them have similar stories as yours. They're able to rise from there, but others are never able to. How do how do people who find themselves in such situations? Um, 
push out or rise from there or find the opportunities around them? So you need to be determined. You should know what you want. You see, the young men of nowadays, they said, well, I don't have money. My parents are poor, but he has a Samsung phone. <laughs> he has iPhone. He can't pay for school fees by iPhone 11, but it was 5,000 that could help you write your media or mm. something. Every one of them have something. So they have other things they, that interest them. I was focused. I said I wasn't doing engineering. It had to take me five times to write the A-level to do what I want. I was ready to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, huh. when I went to school, when I went to the first year, for the first six weeks, I didn't have food to eat. I was eating Gary and Pepe and um, that fish, the um, small, small fish. <laughs> for six weeks, and my body rejected it. When I put it in my mouth, it wasn't going again. Wow. Because I've been eating that continuously for six weeks. When I was going to do my matriculation on the seventh week, the dress I wore, the shoe, the socks, the only thing that belonged to me was my inner, the singlet and the pants. Were all I borrowed the trousers, I borrowed the shirt, I borrowed the jacket, I borrowed everything. All right? I, but that's cool, you know, because I was determined to finish mm -hmm. school. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Today I can buy anything, I can buy at any <laughs> shop. All right? right? But I wouldn't say, because I didn't have a dress, I'm not going to go to school. Mm -hmm. Because I know that I needed that scholastic wisdom. I Why? needed it badly. Right. To understand if I'm going to come out of where I am to make a difference. So I wasn't going to follow what everybody was following. I didn't have a phone, it didn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. What I wanted was to get that certificate. It was so important to me. So they need to be focused, they need to be determined. You need to know what you want and go for it. You understand, you don't just go for, settle for anything. Okay, I want to be an engineer, but because my parents are not you know, able to support me, let me go through the training school and become a trained teacher. So you may end up becoming a permanent teacher. Mm -hmm. You understand how? You have to work and do whatever. I was in tech, second year, I was coming back to Accra. Do surveying, get money, go and pay my bills, leave some for my mother, take care of my younger sister, and go back to school. I was trying, because I was determined to become an engineer, nothing more, nothing, nothing less. less. I wanted to be a civil engineer, and after 10 years, I went back and did it. Yeah. Because that's what I wanted. So those, you need to have a drive, you need to be focused, and you need to be determined that this is what I want, and I'll get it. You understand? Right. Your parents may not be giving anything to you, but your parents didn't have anybody giving them that yeah. either. Okay? And it is not, they are not bound to make you who you want to be. You are who you are because of the choices you have made. Right. You understand? Uh, all the young ladies, even here, everybody has a phone. So if you come back and you tell me you don't have any, sell that phone, use it to do something. Sell that phone, buy such a water cell, multiply it, and do whatever you want to do. You must be focused. This is where I want to get to, and I'll be there. Right. Yeah, that's so. that's uh, really interesting, and we appreciate that you're sharing it with us. Can you take us to your professional journey? You, you definitely started from somewhere. And, and I'm asking this question because um, most often, as young people, once we start a career or we start a professional journey, it's either we cannot see ahead of us or maybe we want to get there too quickly. So uh, we would like you to share that journey with us and how you climbed up. Well, like I told you, I wanted to do civil engineering. Mm. And I wanted to, I, was, I knew what I was, wanted from the beginning. I wanted to work with either Ghana Water or AGC at the time. And I wasn't going to write an um, application to 10 different companies. <laughs> I knew I wanted to work in Ghana Water or AGC. I wanted to do civil, because at that time, Ghana Water was employing only civil, electrical, and mechanical. Okay. If I did anything outside this, I wasn't going to get an opportunity to work there. What happened to, by some happy instant, I found myself doing geodetic, but I was determined to work in Ghana water anyway. Mm. So one day I was going to church and I met, I met a man who knew me when I was young. He had come from the States. Mm. And I was like, Francis, where are you going? I said, I'm going to church. Your mother told me I finished school. I said, yes, I finished school. What course did you read? I said, geodetic engineering. So where do you want to work? I said, Ghana water or ages. <laughs> then he said, well, I have a consult. I'm a consultant to Ghana water. I'm doing some job. Okay. Then I said, well, what is it? Then he said, I'm doing ge geographic information system. Here's what happened. I didn't know about that because when we were in school, they didn't teach us. It was that after a batch that they started teaching. Okay. So I told them, no, I could do it. So I ran to <laughs> some department. At that time, I remember where I paid 50 CDs to somebody. And he taught me how to do it. Because the work had to start in a month's time. So I was going there every morning. I said, please teach me how to do this thing. Because I need to be able to do it. 
It was a consultancy for Ghana Water. It was $90,000. Wow. 1998, 99. So you can imagine me, novice, I don't know anything about this thing. I'm going to manage a $90,000 project. So when I started, I was struggling. So I told the director, you know what? I know a certain man who is very good, and I want him to come. I'll use my money to pay him, but I just want him to come and help me. And that was a man, he was called Joe Amaglo. He was very good at that time. So I managed to convince my boss to bring him. So I started learning from him. Mm -hmm. So when the project was over, I had an agreement with the man that when I finish the national service, I want to work in Ghana Water. I'm not going to work with him again. If he agrees, it's a deal. If he doesn't agree, I go look for my job. He said, oh, no problem after that, I'll do it. When I finished, he didn't want me to go. <laughs> so he was supposed to introduce me to the managing director so they could employ me. He didn't do it. Ghana Water don't take genetic engineer. How am I going to get into this thing? You know what I did? I wrote a, a letter to the managing director. I said, you have a system sitting in your company, $90,000 worth. Nobody can do it. I work with a consultant. I want you to employ me so that I can manage it for you. I didn't write the application. I wrote a letter to him. Wow. Then he said, oh, OK, that sounds good. So he asked me to come. I went for an interview, 1999 September. Then the HR said, we don't take geodetic engineers. We don't even know the grade to put you on. <laughs> so I said, no, don't worry. He said, you get frustrated. I said, why would I get frustrated? He said, you always work on civil engineers. Some of them will be your genius. But the structure is such that surveyors work on civil engineers. Mm. I said, don't worry. When we get to the bridge, we'll cross. Maybe the time they will come, I would have left. But for now, let me be. Then, they refused to give me my letter. I went back to the MD. He called them and said, ah, you told me this young man had got a World Bank job and had left. But he's come back to me and said, he's still in town. Go and get him his letter. So I was the first geodetic engineer to be employed in Ghana Water for the 60 years in Ghana Water history. Wow. As I speak to you, we have about 30 geodetic engineers employed. So you opened the door. Yes, because I created a digital mapping session mm -hmm. and we needed a geodetic engineer. Right. Some way, somehow, I was moved from that department and I was sent to the civil department when I was transferred to Sunyani, Rongaavu, as a distribution engineer and mm. project engineer. Here was what happened. I didn't know anything about distribution. I didn't know anything about project. I had to get laborers to teach me how to do all these things. It taught me. Two years later, I went to do my master's in water supply, environmental sanitation. I came back. I became project manager for Central Western Water, mm -hmm. Ghana Water. After a while, 2011, I was made the distribution manager in Central Region. Somebody had a genetic background. Mm -hmm. And then I came to become a regional engineer in Accra West Region. It transferred me back to Sunyani again. <laughs> I came back last month to be a regional engineer in Tema Region. Distribution manager is mm -hmm. a regional engineer. And so that's been the thing. But along the line, I, I knew that I needed some knowledge and skill, combination of knowledge and skill, right. to make me get to where I want to mm -hmm. be. So I realized that I would need leadership skill. So I got into it, and I started doing leadership courses. I did a lot of short courses in mm -hmm. leadership. And I read a lot of books. But I created a library that has about 500 books in. As we speak now, I have about 500 books in my library. Because I knew that if I was going to make it, there are three things that I needed, knowledge understanding and wisdom. Knowledge, I have to get it from books, interaction with knowledgeable people. So I created a library. I'm always so honored when I have conversations like this because these are things that you cannot buy anywhere and we're grateful that you could share it with us. If you just joined us, this is the Meet Your Mentor TV show. I'm interacting with engineer Francis Lamte. We're going to take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll delve more into his life. <music> You're welcome back. This is the Meet Your Mentor TV show, and I've been interacting with engineer Francis Lamte. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us the opportunity to do this once again. It's been inspiring so far. Now, we want to find out. You're a pastor, you're an entrepreneur, you're an engineer, uh, you're a business owner. How do you do all of these and still manage to stay on top of your game? Right, so I'm a pastor because that's my calling. I really mm -hmm. want to do ministry work. And I've been doing that from the secondary school, the ACU through GAFES. I was the vice president of ICF in the university okay. at the time. So that's what, that's my desire. I'm an engineer because that's my profession. I went to university to do engineering. 
I'm an entrepreneur. I, I've taken a lot of risks. You know? <laughs> I'm into real estate. You know, Accra, to be able to buy lands mm -hmm. and keep them, it's a lot of risks. But I take that and I have quite some plots at very good places. Mm -hmm. So that makes me an entrepreneur. I have a business. I have three businesses. I have a school, Unique Success Academy. Okay. We have a brand. We have a, a, a um, training school and driving school, Lake Star Limited. And I have a farm. Wow. I have a farm that I, you know, I have a very big farm. I have a 30, <laughs> 34 acre land farm. I, I try to put all these things together. Mm -hmm. Here's why I do all these things. Now, why school? I'm working in Ghana Water. The next nine years, I'll be on retirement. I don't want to go on retirement. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I plan for my future. So I want to have a school. When I work out of Ghana Water, then I get back into managing school, administer, do whatever I want to do. Why farm? So that I can go to my farm, old man, and then get some stuff. Mm -hmm. Something to keep me busy. All this is just to keep me busy, all right? Then I, I could be doing my ministry. I don't have to tell people, come and pay tight before I leave. Mm -hmm. I can, I can get some things from my farm, I can right. get some things from my school, and I have the consultancy that I run, and training, and then driving school and this stuff. So all these things are things that I set up. I plan everything I do. So I sit here, I know what I want to become the next year. And the other thing is that I make sure that I read one hour in my food a day. I read, I listen to a mentor session like this, and Brain Tracy on a, a CD, he said, if you read one hour in your food a day for five years, you become an expert. I said, wow, this is very simple. I don't mm -hmm. have to pay anything. So every day, I read one hour in distribution. What I did not plan those times was my health. Okay. You understand? I should, I should have had a plan for my health. What I'm going to eat, the exercise I'm going to do, mm -hmm. I took those things for granted. For granted. You understand? It, it didn't just happen. I'm not just doing this because I have my foundation mm -hmm. solid. So I'm building on it. Because I know I have to be here, I need investment here, I need investment there, so that I don't get carried away. And one, definitely there will be a storm one day in everybody's yes. life. So if a storm should hit what I've built, how is it going to survive? Mm. Talking about storms, you've definitely hit certain low moments in your, your life, throughout yeah. your, your, your professional journey, your, your personal life. Can you share any of such moments with us and, and how you, you rose up from there? There's, uh, one, there's an established fact. Nobody throws stones at unripe fruit, all right? So when you started getting right, people throw stones at you. Mm. You should accept it. If you don't pass through that path, you may not be on the right path, okay? Or you may not be mature to the level that people are interested in. Mm -hmm. So like I told you, I'm a genetic engineer. The company had never employed anybody. Then I started rising before long. I become a regional engineer. My next position was a director. So like this has, is moving too far. This was from national service. From national service, I joined the company. Mm -hmm. I am not in the mainstream, right. but I've entered the mainstream and I've got into the last stage to become a director. Wow. So some way, somehow, I don't know how it happened. People started making allegations against me at a point in 2014. An allegation was made against me that I've stolen some pipes. I was a regional engineer. The pipes comes to me. Mm. I approve it for its use, its purchase. If I wanted to steal, I could just, you know, tell the supplier, you know, bring the document, let me sign that you have bought it or something, and then we share the money. But the story was like, I got up in the night, had a <laughs> truck, went to pick some old pipes, went and sold it somewhere I couldn't imagine, and I was invited to Yoko. I was like, huh? what's happening here? I told them my story. They said that you should go burn documents for eight weeks. I was up and down. They finished that story. I thought it had ended. The people were not happy. They sent me to the presidency. That no, I'm so powerful that even when I went to Yoko, I was able to convince them. Then the president at that time set up a committee, three man committee. I said, wow. They interviewed 200 people. Nobody had anything against me. They came back, they interviewed my boss. They said, I gave him an instruction to do it. That story collapsed. They said, no, he's convinced those committee. They sent me to experts and Rollins. He set up a committee on me again. I was like, what's happening here? Then I went to his house. There was a general <laughs> who was interviewing me. He concluded I haven't done anything. The guy said, no. He took me to the station, Muntier something. Mm -hmm. Every day my name was on the radio for eight months. 
my children were crying, come to me, daddy, when we go to school, you say, oh, father is a thief. I said, I'm not a thief, you know I'm not a thief. Just forget about these people, concentrate. After a while, <laughs> all these things <laughs> collapsed. And then I got promoted to a deputy director within the same period. But that was a difficult time. Yeah. If you're not focused in life, you could commit suicide, you could collapse, anything. It could affect your health, so many things. But I was focused. I kept telling my children, you know me, I'm here with you. I've never stolen anybody's thing, so never mind. When they say it, tell them it is not your father. <laughs> it is not your father. When they say you heard your father, they say tell them it's not your father. Because I haven't stolen anything and the truth come out. I went through a very terrible time and that was one of the worst things that's ever happened to me. I can't imagine. Mm. I've stayed in a company, I've never picked anything, not a pen of the company. And people could make that allegation. But you see, these are things that you go through. You go through because once you're ripe, any boy who close from school will throw stone at you. Mm. Right? So take it like that. Once you start making it, people will start making accusations. If you start making it, people say, don't mind this guy, he's a drug dealer. Don't mind this guy, he's this. this. If you know you're not into drugs, don't get worried. Be focused mm. in life and be determined to reach where you want to. Because they will only remember you for your success. If you don't get to the top, nobody will ever remember you. Right. And then uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams said something, I remember 1992, he said, success attracts success. Once you become successful, it will attract so many other successes. Right. If you don't get to become successful, nobody will help you. Today, today people come to me with property worth about $20,000. So you just give us 10,000 Ghana CD and pay the rest later. <laughs> Years back, if it's $20,000 property, and I say I have $19,500, you tell me, go and add the yeah, $500 add, before yeah. you come. But today, because they consider me mm -hmm. having some level of sausage, they think that if they give it to me, they definitely can get yeah. their money. So when it becomes successful, it will attract other sources. But on, on that journey to success, a lot of people will distract you. Mm -hmm. They will throw a lot of stones at you. They throw a lot of mud at you. But you must be focused. Right. And like, it's been bad. I mean, I'm writing a book when I write it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't wait to read that. What are you most proud of? Yes, to be, um, you know, first, I'm the first person in my family, both father's side and mother's side, to finish the university to become an engineer. Mm -hmm. And to be the first geodetic engineer in Ghana water, and then having reason to become a regional engineer, I mean, I feel that, yeah. you know, when you write the history of Ghana water, and I'm talking about that, <laughs> Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'll be the I'm sure I'll be the first geodetic engineer to become a director. God willing. Yes, amen. <laughs> Wow, this has been an absolute honor and we're so glad that you could share this with us. We'll take a question from our audience. Right. Please, what's your job as a geodetic engineer? And also, what are you doing to tell us our um, water and sanitation issue in this country? What am I doing? Yes, like in your profession as a, uh, someone who studied water and sanitation in school, what are you doing to get all that issue about water and sanitation? All right. Uh, genetic engineering, now they call them geomatic because then they are, they are having a geographic information system in addition. So they do digital mapping and spatial analysis. And then it helps you to design, uh, you know, the, the planning department at the assemblies. They have what we call the spatial planning department. So we have the digital data, so we, we know where the roads should be and all those other things. So that one. The second thing about genetic engineering that we do solving to give height. If you're putting up a building, we have to give it the height to put up the structure. Okay, and then we give control pillars for solving for the roads, the buildings, how the cities are designed. So we do solving, we do digital map, we do spatial analysis and all that. That's genetic engineering. Now about the water and sanitation. I, I did water and sanitation, but I am currently in the water industry. But I do sanitation as a consultancy. I design sewage systems for people. I've done some for some of the mining companies before. So I do that, but I'm not now in solid waste. Mm. I'm not doing solid waste, although it's part of my training. But I'm doing liquid waste and drinking water. Drinking water, that's what I do in Ghana water. I make sure that um, 
people, the water is equitably distributed. Everybody gets some enough to take care of his sanitation and his drinking. Then the industries also get enough for their work. Thank you once again for, for giving us this opportunity to speak to you, Engineer Francis Lamte. It was such an honor, and we're grateful for all the nuggets that you shared with us. And thank you for doing the viewing at home. This has been the Meet Your Mentor TV show. My name is Daniela Asari Edu. We're being refreshed by Cheesy Pizza. Uh, they have a lot of branches all around Inusu, Ring Road, Dan Suman. Please reach out to them on their social media platforms and enjoy amazing pizza. We're also being refreshed by Nutri Day from Fan Milk. Kindly reach them on 055-176-7676. That's 055-176-7676. Noddy's Makeover did my amazing makeup. Please check it out on Instagram. We're, we're, we're absolutely honored to, to have had this conversation today. Next week, we'll come your way same time with another riveting conversation. Until then, do take care.